So over the past few months, I've uh, collected a few more stuff from the Guardians of Order uh, book catalog. I got three more that I want to show you guys. The Centauri Knights D20 Guide, uh, Grave of Heaven Eurasia D20, and the Fushigi Yui the Mysterious Play Ultimate Fan Guide Volume 1. So starting with uh, Centauri Knights, this is pretty much all the uh, same setting information as the Besom 2nd Edition source book for it, but it's been updated to work with Besom D20. This means basically you're using a splat book for a derivative of a generic of a generic system. This is very very far removed from anything anybody would likely wind up using. And I don't even know how much this costs because the sticker was because there was a sticker placed over the barcode where the suggested retail price is. And that is actually an Amazon barcode right there. So I bought this from a used bookstore. Maybe Amazon just dumped off a bunch of their a bunch of their surplus stock that they can't sell into that bookstore because there was a whole lot of copies of these all on sale for like a dollar or five dollars. I don't remember how much exactly a piece. As I said, a lot of these, a lot of the uh, artwork in here is all the same. All the setting information is the same. It's just bits been updated for Besom D20. So really, to ultimately use this, you need Besom D20, D&D 3rd Edition, and this book, and maybe D20 Mecha as well. So there is really no chance in hell that anyone would end up actually using this. So this is kind of a wasted book. Don't know, I don't even know how much this originally sold for. I'm just going to guess $20. And you don't even get that much of a book either because it's only like 80 pages long. Same deal here, Grave of, Ur uh, Grave of Heaven Eurasia. Um, that is, this is the D20 version of the D20 version of that setting book, which was originally designed for Big Eye Small Mouth 2nd Edition as well. And some of the stuff that was included in here also did wind up getting included in the 3rd Edition as well. If, uh, some of the artwork for this looks familiar, that would actually be because one of the three contributing artists for this book, uh, was Nico Geyer who did the artwork for uh, OVA as well. This one, once again, it's just a setting book that has a lot of names of cities and different cultures and a couple of maps, if you're into that sort of thing. And once again, this uses the D20, this uses the uh, D20 system, Dungeons and Dragons 3rd edition, and Besom D20. So you need like three books in order to, in order to <laughs> make use of this one right here. But uh, two of the prerequisite books are uh, licensed under the uh, open game license, so you can get text dump versions of those available for free if you somehow wind up with this in your possession. One of the reasons why I actually just don't like D20 in general, precisely because there is a lot of material out there, but at the same time, a lot of it is like interdependent on other D20 source books or what, or what have you, but I digress. This probably wasn't bad, but it requires way too much way too much hoops to jump through to make useful so i got it just for the sake of novelty and last is a relic from uh times gone by that we will probably never see again uh fan guide books because these this was uh published uh, t early 2000s i think before uh web 2.0 really popped up really uh started taking over and so a lot of your information that you could get was from books instead of like like Wikipedia style web pages that are all over the place. So uh, fan guide books like this were fairly common, and this seems to be. And the first, like the the bulk of this is a guide to the first season of an old anime called Fushigi Yugi, the Mysterious Play, which I've never actually seen myself. But the premise from reading the first few pages of it before I turned on my video camera is that there is uh, is that uh, some characters find end up finding a book and when they read the book they wind up getting sucked into the world of said book quite literally they read the book and they wind up inside the world of the book and that's actually a really cool looking two page spread right there artifacts like this are really interesting to me because. Not only are they something, fr because they are something from a time long ago where the internet just wasn't prevalent and this was how people got their information and all their images. 
That and, like, trading card packs and stuff. You didn't have, like, all sorts of, like, Boros-style image databases where you can just search for tags on things. You just had to either hope that someone made a fan shrine for it if you want to look on the internet, or you had to find a book for it yourself. And, yeah, so... They're relics of a bygone era that no one should, in their right mind should probably care about, but I do. And I wanted to share that with you guys. So, with all that said, I'm Aaron Darshadel, and I will see you all next time.